Hey you guys, Lissandro here and uh, today I'm going to do an educational video and basically what you're looking at here is Multisim. This is some um, electrical engineering software uh, used to simulate uh, circuits in real time, how they will uh, behave in real life and practical. Uh, but, any, uh, but anyway, and yes, I do have electrical engineering background, considering that's part of computer engineering. But anyway, uh, what I'm be talking about is something very common that a lot of you are familiar with, considering that a lot of y'all uh, like to carry around your cell phone all the time and all. Um, so, have you ever wondered what's inside a cell phone charger? I'm not talking about the portable battery ones. I'm talking about uh, the ones that you plug in uh, into your outlet yeah those okay and what's inside them are a transformer rectifier diodes electrolytic capacitors and a senior diode Okay, and what the uh, what that is is or uh, that's uh, what comprises a rectifier. Okay, that's what uh, comprises a rectifier, and what the rectifier does, it pretty much changes AC current, alternating current to DC current, direct current, and uh, and a, and pretty much they set it to uh, low enough power enough to charge your. Um, enough to charge your cell phone without damaging it um, at least to satisfactory levels so anyway let, let's get started so basically you start with a ground okay and you get um, a AC current source okay and what this is is um, this is pretty much uh, what this is is pretty much the power source that you get uh, from your outlet okay so um, if you you ever looked on your um, cell phone charger you usually get uh, a little indication of 120 volts 60 Hertz and uh, remember I told you uh, it's alternating current because it uh, 60 Hertz because that's the frequency uh, uh, of the alternating current remember it's a sine wave and let me show you wh uh, what I mean now remember that I, uh, I told you guys that uh, in order to touch an outlet without getting electrocuted you would have to be super fast uh, kind of like the flash um, this is what I'm talking about. Let me let me show you how uh, AC uh, current looks like on a graph. Okay, uh, this is the al alternating current. This is a sine wave, but this is in 10 milliseconds interval and five um, five volts amplitude. Now let, let me adjust it to 100 uh, interval. Okay, so this is uh, how it looks like. And the thing is that in order for you to touch it without getting electrocuted, you would have to touch it within these, uh, um, within the, between the low, uh, low power ranges, ranging from, uh, wherever the power is low enough to, uh, for you to tolerate, uh, for you to tolerate, or at least touch it. Um, when the zero points basically you have to touch in the zero points really fast before it charges back up uh, the problem is that this is uh, this is in a small uh, minute uh, interval now um, let me show you what uh, how it looks like in uh, uh, in seconds range now do you think you could uh, touch it like touch it at a uh, faster range look what happens you um the more um the larger you make the time frame the more uh the cycle uh cycles it gives you okay and as you can see it looks uniform so there's no way you can touch that without getting uh electrocuted at least a bit 
and th that's judging by the conductivity of your uh, of your body and the electrical resistivity and all that okay so there, there's no way you can uh, po uh, possibly uh, touch that or anything of the sort okay so this is uh, this is how it looks like okay so let me uh, let me go ahead and close this so what um, what re rectifiers do uh, they convert it from AC to DC current okay so let me show you uh, one type of rectifier and this is what they call uh, a halfway rectifier and you're gonna see why in a sec okay now a lot of companies use uh, these for um, to cut back on production um, these simpler um, rectifiers uh, to cut, ba cut back on production and, uh, and on devices that is not, where the power level is not so critical if it uh, tends to go haywire and all and one thing I forgot to mention 60 Hertz means 60 cycles within a second okay just keep that in mind okay so uh, let me go to properties and let me show you what it looks like uh, and a 10 millisecond time frame you see how it looks like this okay let me show you what happens as you can see here is no uh, it's no longer um, this is no longer a AC current this is this DC current but it's still uh, pretty high because it reaches uh, 120 volts peak to peak whereas the other one reached 120 volts peak and negative 120 volts peak on the negative peak instead of reaching ne uh, uh, negative voltage it reaches zero so you still have a chance to uh it still gives you a little chance for you to touch this while getting electrocuted but if i if i uh raise it back to the 10 second uh um not 10 second the one second time frame it's still uniform so there's no way you can uh, touch that without getting electrocuted this is a halfway rectifier now there is another one uh there's another one and uh, this one is a full way uh, bridge rectifier and let me show you what it looks like okay so let's go over here and get this guy here okay uh, this is all we're gonna need um, this is uh, in, re in reality the actual uh, schematic for a uh, four-way bridge rectifier okay but uh, for simplification purposes and explanation uh, I'm gonna be doing it uh, a different way so let me go and get it get these diodes one two and let me connect them right here okay uh, let me connect this one uh, this guy here to here and let me go ahead and uh, sources ground and let me get a ground over here and so connect it now take a look what happens when you uh, when you build it like this add two more um, rectifier diodes and, and in case you uh, I don't know how they uh, these diodes look like they look like this okay so now that I got that out of the way uh, let me go ahead and uh, do let me go ahead and do this so let me go ahead and adjust it to 100 uh, interval and as you can see there it, it's you no longer get like uh for example you no longer get um 
only one uh, one uh, one wave you no longer get one uh, one peak you're getting both peak both the um, positive and where the negative peak is supposed to be uh, so so pretty much this is what they use for um, this is what they use for trickle charging now the other one where it uh, the other one which was, was only only half a wave uh, was is in reality more ideal than this one to charge it all depends on the application but basically a uh, trickle charge is used uh, for certain types of lithium ion lithium polymer or certain types of alloy or certain types of lead acid batteries in which you have to uh, charge it at um, at continuous intervals you can't charge it continuously uh, in a continuous uh, way and the reason why is because if you try to charge it continuously what ends up happening is that the battery uh, ends up heating up and if you continue to uh, charge it while it's heating up uh, it can either damage the battery you can either uh, uh, get it to heat up and damage either your components or uh, or the battery itself catches on fire so that's why they do this and the way it works is that it charges it cools down now if it's there's a there's a certain wave in there uh, a certain wave interval which uh, it's zero it has better chance of cooling off rather than uh, rather than here and like I said uh, even in, in here it, it all goes to the uh, to the zero points here then like I did in the other one and le let me show you Okay, properties okay and just like I said it has better chance of cooling down here at uh, the zero points and you have better chance of touching while getting electrocuted but like uh, like I'm uh, uh, like I mentioned before it's still um, uniform in a one second interval you will have to be super fast okay so um, now that I got out, that out of the way uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and put it put it back. Okay. Okay. So put it here. Put it here. Okay. So. So this is good. This is um, both both the one you saw earlier and this one are DC uh, uh, current because uh, currents only flowing in one direction, zero or one direction. Unlike the uh, negative peak and positive peak, where it was as negative 120 volts and 120 volts, it's only uh, the maximum peak of 120 volts to zero. It's not peak to peak like the other one. Uh, so this is good, but the problem is that in devices where you need continuous, uh, where you need a continuous charge, this isn't good. So what they uh, what they do uh, is they get uh, an electrolytic capacitor. Okay, so let me go ahead and get one. Microfarad, okay. Damn it. Okay, to get electrolytic capacitor. Okay. Ah, here we go. Okay, close. This is all I need. Uh, wrong, wrong way. 
Okay. Okay. Here we go. So now that I have this here, I connected a ground. Okay. Notice what happens. If you see here, it, it, it's an instantaneous rate of change here. And one of the things I want to say is that uh, when you're charging your cell phone, you never want to connect the, the phone first and then to the outlet because you you get spike uh, and surges that can possibly damage your phone. Now, I understand that some phones have like some tolerance in their internal component, but not so much to tolerate uh, um, large spikes. They may be short, uh, instantaneous, but they can... Um, in those milliseconds, they uh, they can certainly damage a lot of vital components, especially now that a lot of phones are, have delicate CMOS circuit technologies and other micro technologies that are dependent on on small voltage ranges, um, small power ranges to be exact. Okay, but uh, here's the thing: can you do it with any range? And the answer is no. Look what happens when you put a smaller capacitance range. Okay. You see, it charges, but it goes down. It goes down. It doesn't charge that well. So, what do we do here? Okay, and what we uh, what they have is something they called a Zener diode. It's one of these guys. Let me uh, let me show you the. Um, the schematic for it. Well, let me go back here. Okay. Uh, it looks like this. Okay. Um, you connect these and you connect this to ground. Okay. Go to properties and Let's see. Give me a sec. Oh yeah, I forgot to change the range. 120. Okay. And there. Okay. Properties. And. Okay. So you see, it's it's a little bit different, but still, uh, something's wrong. It's not. For starters, not doing that much, and it's uh, uh, certainly still rippling. This is a ripple effect. It's not like the other ripple effect I showed you earlier. Okay, so what do we do? And the thing is, you what you do is you get uh, one of these resistors. You you always want to uh, get resistors to uh, kind of put kind of regulate the. Um, the amount of current that uh, goes through. Okay, so go to properties and run it again. And as you can see, it looks even better. It, it sets a limit. That way, you won't get a spike surge or anything. Um, okay, but even then, uh, it, it's still it's still rippling. So what what happens now? What do we do now? Uh, so what we do is we in, uh, we increment the um, values of the uh, uh, capacitors. So let's go ahead and increase it to 400. Okay. Go here. And nothing. Hardly anything. You can barely tell any change. Okay. So let's try that again. Let's This time let's increase it to double its value. We're going to be doubling it uh, each time. So one picofarad. Um, uh, still nothing. Okay. So let's try something else. Uh, let's go ahead and double it again. Two picofarad. Nothing. 
okay so uh, let's go ahead and uh, this time we'll crank it up all the way to 10 picofarad okay and you start seeing a change here because it no longer goes to uh, lets it go all the way to zero. It starts curving, okay, but it's still not good enough. So let's uh, let's multiply that ten times. Let's crank it up to a hundred picofarad. Okay, so let's see. And it's even better. It, it, it's much better but it still dips it still dips so it's still not perfect uh and uh let's double it again let's make this 200 picofarad okay and i'm doing this to show the gradual progression of uh, what it does okay it, it's still dipping but it's uh, there's much better change now let me go ahead and crank it all, all the way to like let's say 500 picofarad okay properties and it dips but not that much it doesn't dip that much anymore okay uh, let's try something else. Let's go ahead and double it uh, one more time. This time to one nanofarad. Okay, and you can see it dip a little, but it's n it's still not quite there. It's much more stable. And some electronic devices can tolerate this, but not uh, not all of them, especially sensitive ones. And if you want a continuous current, you um, you need to have it perfectly uh, rectified. So um, let's go ahead and double this one more time. Okay. And it dips a little, a, li uh, a little. It's almost perfect, but still dips a little. Not quite there. So let's double it one last time, and um, to see what what happens. And click OK. Properties. And as you can see here, you have a fully rectified. Uh, um, DC power supply. This is stable. This is usually what uh, what you want on your cell phone. Not this voltage range, of course, but uh, you want a stable current. You don't want an, uh, a fluctuating or alternating current. Uh, so this is perfect. Some uh, you could get away with a little dips uh, uh, here and there, but if you want perfect engineering of a device you want it uh, perfectly stable as best as you can now you gotta consider when you're uh, when you're manufacturing something your cost of course because you're not gonna raise the cost of your production uh, of your production just to get uh, the exceptional quality that it no longer becomes cost effective uh, and it, it's like this um, in metals, they put uh, in metals when they prepare them for corrosion uh, resistance. They put like primers and uh, or galvanize them to uh, to keep them from corroding. Now, a better uh, a better option would be to plate them in gold, but since gold is more resistant. But the thing is that it's not cost effective it's not cost effective and, it's, and especially if you're going to be doing something in an industrial area so you have to consider uh, your costs whenever you're 
uh, whenever you're engineering something, a balance between quality and the cost and what the application is going to be. So uh, as you can see here, you already have a perfectly rectified signal. And this is what's in your cell phone charger. Okay? So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.